going to make some uh, Mutaflor. You can buy Mutaflor from Canada, but you can't really get it in the U.S. because the FDA decided that there was apparently too much medical evidence that it was really uh, helpful for things like ulcerative colitis and um, chronic constipation. They said it's so effective that uh, if you're going to sell it, you need proper medical studies to show that it's effective and clinical trials and all. And, Otherwise, you can't sell it. So it was this really lame catch-22 situation where you can't buy Mutaflor in the U.S. anymore. You can buy it from Canada, but um, this little thing of 60 fairly small little pills is going to set you back about $80 U.S. Uh, so what I did is I made my own. Um, and I can make one of these little pills, which is pretty high strength Mutaflor for about, uh, well I make about a big thing of 300 for uh, about $6 US. Um, to do that, uh, you have to do several steps. Number one, you have to make some Mutaflor yogurt. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. And second of all, you have to uh, then freeze dry it. Now you can eat the yogurt all by itself, but um, if you freeze dry it and put it in enteric capsules, it'll get down into the small intestine better. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about how to make uh, Mutaflor yogurt. First thing you need to know is that Mutaflor takes about 24 hours to culture, which is uh, about uh, over twice as long as regular yogurt. And that means that you, you don't want to get any other bacteria in your culture, because if you do, they're going to... Uh, over, they could overgrow your mutaflor and you'll have a nasty batch you have to throw away. So you don't want that. So what you want to do is first prepare your, we're going to use a soy milk base. It's soy milk and sugar, that's it. Um, and then we're going to take that and we're going to sterilize it. Not just pasteurize it, we're going to sterilize it. In the science realm we call it autoclaving. Um, but we're basically going to use a pressure cooker. It heats it up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit or so and that's enough to kill uh, just about anything. So we're gonna sterilize our soy milk base and uh, then we're gonna let it cool for about at least eight hours at room temperature. And then we'll add our Mutaflor culture, which is basically just adding one of these or uh, one of these capsules that I've made up. We'll just break the thing open and put it in the, uh, the Mutaflor. Okay, so I have your pressure cooker. I put a good amount of water in the bottom and I've um, got some tin foil, and I've got two spoons. I'm going to sterilize a couple of those spoons. I've got this stainless steel tray that will fit down inside this uh, pressure cooker. And I've got my soy milk and my sugar. See, it even says sugar on it. Okay, now the thing about the soy milk is you have to make sure that uh, you get soy milk that is only soybeans and water. Okay, if you get some of the commercial soy milk that has vitamin D and calcium and all sorts of stuff, that's fine for other things, but not for this. Okay, so uh, this Trader Joe's or West Soy has um, good stuff. But you want see how it says water and soybeans. That's all you want. Okay, um, and my pan, my pot will hold at least a liter and a half not two, about three good tablespoons of sugar, get the tablespoons out of here, so that's, there's one, I know this is a teaspoon, but if you measure it, it's going to be closer to a tablespoon, nice and dissolved, now we're going to cook it in the pressure cooker for about at least 20 minutes, about 25 is probably good, we want to get this heated up, the reason you put it in the pressure cooker is that you can get the temperature above the boiling point because the pressure in there is about 15 PSI um, by the time this little thing on top starts to wobble around. And at that pressure, the boiling point of water is raised enough to uh, get it above the temperature where it's just going to kill everything. So it's completely sterilized this stuff so we don't get any stray culture when we get to the yogurt making, because who knows what was in this pan or the sugar. The soy milk was sterile. Um, we know that because it was sealed and stable at room temperature, even though it's a liquid that could easily grow bacteria. Okay, so this is all pretty well mixed up now. And 
now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this over like that. That does not make a nice seam around it. I just rinsed off the spoon. I'm going to take two spoons and put this, set them on top of the soy milk. This is a stainless steel pan, so I can set it in, set it in my pressure cooker. And now I've got at least like three quarters of an inch of water. We need a little more than the, the minimum amount of water in the bottom of the pressure cooker because we're going to cook it for longer than we might usually uh, use a pressure cooker for because we're not just cooking vegetables or sterilizing this whole liquid and we have to heat the liquid up. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that thing on. I'm going to let it heat up till this little thing starts uh, sizzling and then uh, I'm going to let it cook. Okay, now after it cooks, uh, then I'm going to turn the heat off, but do not take this off the heat. And, and whatever you do, don't just like open it or pull this off. We want this to cool down really gradually because um, if we cool it down too quickly, see that soy milk is going to be above the boiling point of water. If we cool it down too quickly, it's going to boil off like crazy and you'll get soy milk splattered everywhere inside your pressure cooker where you don't want it. So we want it to cool down slowly all the way down to room temperature um, and then we'll add the culture. We, obviously we don't want to add the culture until it's cooled all the way down because that would kill the culture. Okay, so we'll come back in about eight hours after this is boiled and then had a chance to cool. And now the pressure cooker is cooking away. There it goes. Got that nice little, this little uh, jiggle going there. We'll come back in about 25 minutes. Okay, we're back. It's been oh, about 12 hours now, so a little longer than I planned, but this has now been boiled, sterilized, and now ready for the yogurt maker. So, if you look here inside the yogurt maker, you'll see that there's about an inch of water, right? And this yogurt maker is special because... <coughs> Unlike most, it has a temperature control. So we can hit the start button and let's see, function. Okay, this is a temperature. We want it 37, that's centigrade, not Fahrenheit. Okay, hit the function, hit the start. And now the time, we're going to put it for a whole 24 hours. Okay start now this is going to heat up to about yeah about 37 and uh once we're done we're just going to put this little towel over it to help hold the heat in all right but in any case our main concern now is to take these existing mutafor cap and we're going to open this thing up and you see inside that i have these two spoons that i kept sterilized so I'm going to very carefully remove this and I'm going to put spoons back, we'll say one here, in that sterile thing. And then we're going to open this up a little bit and I'm going to keep this part of the business on sterile. I'm going to open up this up just a little because I really don't want to get any other bacteria in there. And now I'm going to, one of these should be more than enough, but just to really make the point, I'm going to put two in there. Okay, right, so I'm going to open this thing up. I've got Mutaflor powder in there. I'm going to just dump that in. That should be more than enough, but just to be sure. Put two in. Again, this is um, this is freeze dried Mutaflor powder from the last batch of exactly this that I made. Okay, 
now that I've done that, I'm going to take the sterilized spoon and just reach in there and give it a good little stir so that it's all mixed around in there. Okay, done with that. Set that aside. And now all we have to do, now that we've stirred in our starter, and this is at room temperature, I'm going to set this in the water bath, which will pretty quickly heat up to 37 centigrade. It, needs, it really needs to be 37. It doesn't, if you heat it up too much, you'll kill it. Not enough and it won't grow. Okay, we'll come back in 24 hours. Okay, so we've gone about 20 hours with this, uh, which is probably good enough, so we're going to uncap it. And, look in here, go ahead and pull this out. Now let's see what our Rita Flor yogurt looks like. Okay, so if you look closely at that, you can see it's basically, it's got some curds in there. Uh, it has it has a smell that's uh, it's hard to describe, but it's not putrid, it's not rancid, it doesn't smell like barf or anything. So if it does, you did something wrong. Uh, and if it looks substantially different from like this kind of weak curds, then you probably did something wrong too. Okay, so uh, that's what that looks like. You can probably store it in the fridge like yogurt for a little bit. Um, eat it. Um, but what I'm going to do in the next video is turn it into uh, capsules. We're going to freeze dry it and put it in these little capsules that you can buy. All right.